I woke covered in earth, clawing my way to freedom. It's crazy, even underground, you can still tell which way is up. When my fingers reached freedom, I grabbed at the air. But it was hot. Hot as hell. The heat was already unbearable, and I wasn't even all the way free yet. But the weight of the dirt was starting to cave my chest in. And I could feel my body running low on strength. When I got free, I, I couldn't see anything around me. The air vibrated and smoke flowed like clouds in a hurricane. Dark figures lurked in the haze. I could smell them. They smelled like sulfur and rotten meat. If this was hell, those were demons. I found out very quickly that they'd rather do more beating than talking. The demons beat me with their pitchforks, the tips burning like fire. But through my bloody and blurred vision, I watched every blow in agony. I wanted to die, but I think I'm already dead. The relief I felt after the beating stopped was heavenly. The demons drug me through the mud, their hooves kicking the sludge in my face. They were dragging me to a door. Inside I could hear moans and groans just like mine. I wasn't the only one suffering here. The demons threw me through the door and shut it. And a voice cut the air with a screech. You were here only to be broken again. Don't become strong. Strength is a trait of fools. The stronger you get, the worse the breaking of your strength. Stay weak and you will flourish. The demons entered the room and sprayed me down with filth that even a garbage man couldn't stand, washing away any last hope I had. My injuries shined like rubies, and I did my best to protect them. A true brutal treasure. A hole opened up, and food dropped through. The bread is harder than the pan it was baked in, and the meat was seasoned leather. But the taste is amazing. You'd be surprised what you'll eat when you feel like you ain't ate in weeks. Now while I was eating, one of the demons knocked on my door. When you go to sleep, I will enter your room. As soon as your eyes close, I'm coming in. Coming in. Well, I guess I ain't getting no sleep tonight. <laughs> I could hear his footsteps as he walked away. Yeah, I'm gonna be staying up real late tonight. But as time went by, I started to nod off. And just when I did, I heard a laugh. <laughs> Don't forget my promise. So I stood up and I, I moved around, trying to shake off the sleep. I massaged my wounds as I tried to remember what got me here. Suddenly my door opened but no one entered the room. I walked to the door cautiously and peered into the dimly lit hall. I moved slowly down the hall, trying to stick to the shadows. I heard someone and I froze. A man screamed in agony as a group of demons carried and beat him. I want to help. You know, it seems right. 
but I would give myself away. And as they beat the man, he kicked and knocked something off one of them. Whatever it was fell to the floor and the demon didn't seem to notice. It was a gun. What if he was the one who freed me? I have to help, right? I dove for the gun and shot two of the three demons and held the last one hostage. How do I get out of here, I asked him. There's no way out. Not for any of us. This is your life until you die repeatedly. The man I saved said, you know, they probably heard the shots. Kill him and let's go. I hesitated, but the prisoner picked up another gun and shot the demon before I could even realize what was going on. He grabbed me and pulled me along with him. We ran down this dark corridor until we reached the door with smoke coming from under it. The prisoner looked desperately for another way, but the alarm started to ring, and we made our way through the door. The room was hotter than anything I've ever experienced. I could hear screams around us, and what I could only assume was the smell of burning flesh. I can't see anything, I said. The prisoner said, just look for the light. We opened the heavy door and ran inside. I leaned against the cell to catch my breath, not realizing that there was a prisoner inside. He reached through and grabbed me. The prisoner that helped me attacked the hands of the man so I could finally get loose. But while I got loose, he teared a piece of my shirt and took it with him. The man inside the cell hid in the shadows, but he spoke to me. Come here. Come here. Just let me hug you. I haven't touched a human in so long. Please. 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 The prisoner that was helping me said, come on, let's keep moving. We got to go. Rows of rows of cells on each side of the wall with shadowy figures inside. Some talking crazier, some screaming in pain. Some just stood there staring at nothing. Some laid on the floor like they were dead. Their bodies rotting right there in the cell. Do you know where we going? The prisoner asked me, do you remember anything? Like, how did you get here? What happened? And I said, I just remember glimpses of things. I remember a woman, like a, a beautiful woman. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in the dirt, you know, getting my head beat in. The prisoner said, I remember the outside world. I remember it. I know it exists. I know this isn't life. But I, I remember making some bad choices. I remember not listening. We continued down a tunnel until we reached the big glass window. Inside we saw freedom. We saw hope. We saw the light. We saw the sunshine. The sun shined brighter than it ever shined before. woke up screaming and clawing for my bed sheets. Every time I had this dream, I always woke up the same way. 
There's a thin line between reality and fantasy. A thin line that I've been balancing on, struggling not to fall too far to either side. Fantasy used to be a big house in the suburbs, a family, kids, pets, and a beautiful wife in the kitchen preparing a meal for her husband as he came home from an easy day at work. Now fantasy is nothing but a dream deferred. Reality set in a long time ago, slapping me in my frowning face every chance it got. I often think that maybe I would fantasize more often, but it's hard when you're dodging the bullets of the people that destroyed your fantasy in the first place. I wanted to give in, just accept defeat and take the punishment that was headed my way. I couldn't stand waiting any longer. The clock ticking in my head became a bomb, and I knew it was about to explode at any second. Working undercover is brutal. Imagine every word you say and deed you do is a lie. I took an assignment that nobody else wanted, or to be completely honest, nobody else was dumb enough to take. I was so deep undercover that I couldn't even contact my family. I moved to a new city and started working for the most brutal up and coming street gang in the country, Murder Mob, Double M for short. Now I had one person who I could contact in case of an emergency, but that didn't make much sense because every second of my life was a freaking emergency. But even then, I had to be careful because there were moles in the police department. So no one knew I was undercover but him. I was recommended to one of the smaller but trusted sets of Double M as a gun runner. Now, I was given a few cases of AKs and bullets to use to set up the game. Now, as brutal as they was... They were very precise in the way they committed their crimes. Always making sure there wasn't any evidence left behind to tie them to the crimes they committed. Now those crimes were so brutal that anyone that was left alive was too scared to come forward and talk. So police had to come up with a plan as slick as the criminals they wanted to catch. The AKs would leave a distinctive marking on the bullets. And the bullets themselves were already marked. This way all the murders done by them could be tied back to them easily. Once enough murders were committed, it should draw the attention of FBI or preferably the Marines. And we could get rid of Double M before they got any bigger. I didn't like the plan. That meant more people were going to have to die in order for us to bring them in. Why couldn't I just sell them the guns and bust them on the gun charges? <laughs> One thing I found out about my time here doing police work is it's not always clear who the good and bad guys are. The meet was scheduled for a Sunday night. So the streets had a no dealing on the Lord's Day policy. So it was perfect cover. Even the worst gangster respected the policy. The only thing worse than criminals is criminals that think they got the Lord on their side. They had me meet with them on the industrial side of town. So a truck full of guns would blend in with all the other trucks moving around. I really didn't agree with the strategy here. You know, I, like I said, giving guns to gangsters seemed like it was everything but police work. The very opposite, in fact. But I had my superiors I had to answer to. And I did all I could to look the part, which included dressing like a rapper and staring in the mirror for an hour, practicing my fake smile and emotionless eyes look. I usually kept a few guns hidden on me just in case. 
because I always felt like at any moment I'd be recognized by somebody I busted back in the day whose path for evil led them right here with me on my path for justice. <laughs> Speaking of paths, lately mine hasn't felt so just. I've realized the root word for justice isn't just, it's justified. I commit the same acts as the criminals that I pursue. The only difference is my actions are justified by the people in power. My gun has fired more shots than many of the criminals that I've arrested or put down. I pretended we were different just to stop my memories from driving me crazy. I made my way to the meat spot and I was the last one to get there. Double M head guys everywhere. They circled me like sharks that smelled blood. And some stood on rooftops like vultures, waiting for the sharks to get done feeding. I opened up the truck, showed them the guns. They seemed to be happy. It's amazing though, how a left turn versus a right turn can turn somebody's world upside down. As they unloaded the guns and inspected them and checked them out and checked the ammo and went to go get the money, some woman walked up. Some woman walked up with her child. I don't know what she was doing over here in this part of town. Maybe her car broke down. Maybe she was looking for a husband who worked over here somewhere. But for whatever reason, she was here. And for a quick second, she looked up and she saw a case full of AK 47s. In a split second, I had to make a decision. Do I watch why they kill this lady, or do I blow my cover? Trying to talk murder mob out of murdering <laughs> was like trying to talk water out of being wet. I said, hold on a second, wait a minute, y'all, wait a minute. We ain't got, you know, it's okay, it's cool, it's cool, you know. It's, it's just, uh, it's just some props we got here for a movie we gonna shoot. That's all. It's okay, lady. It's just props. We shoot the movie, all right? <laughs> you and your son get on out of here, okay? The lady seemed pretty street smart. So she quickly grabbed her son and put on a little fake little smile and turned to leave. The only problem was I saw one of the gangsters going for their gun. I saw him draw it from his pocket. I saw him click the safety off. And I saw him reach up to point it towards her. Now my arm became his own entity and reached into my waistband and pulled my pistol out and fired a shot before my brain even realized what was going on. It's hard to fight your instincts. Whoever hunts monsters should make sure that he himself don't become a monster. When you stare into the hole, the hole stares back into you. The darkness is addictive. You know, if I had one wish, it would be for wisdom, you know. Wisdom to make better decisions. 
but I guess I didn't really have a choice. Most likely, they're gonna shoot this poor girl and her kid, and I'm not really numb enough to stand by and watch. At least not yet. Once I fired my shot, I had to think quick of that family I was protecting would end up dead anyway. Now before they could get to their guns in the car, I laid down another three of them and ran to the woman and threw her and the kid behind some cover. I tried reasoning with them. Maybe I should have done that first. You know, but <laughs> that's what I was talking about. You know, that wisdom. I said, just let me walk. Y'all can keep the guns and the money. Just let us walk up out of here. The girl will keep quiet. And, you know, and I'm so 12 on the way. How do you think they replied? <laughs> they replied by cocking their guns and throwing more lead than a pencil factory. I was quick with my gun, but not quick enough to beat five or six Uzi shooting at me. I looked for an escape route and prayed for sirens to scream a warning to these murderers to get out of here now and live to die another day. No such luck on that siren, though. I grabbed the woman and we headed for a building, using the pallets full of junk around us for cover and whatever else we could hide behind. Bullets whizzed by. Everything around us was lit up. But somehow, we made it into the building safe. I don't know anything about how smart this girl is, but she was smart enough to shut up move fast and keep her head low. I heard the gunfire stop and I heard sirens closing in. I heard them rush to get the guns loaded and dip out. We should be safe for now, right? Once I was sure we were safe and I watched the police look around and try to find some idea of what went on right there. I finally took some time to talk to her. What are you doing here? You know, why are you here in the first place? So do you, you don't even know what you just messed up, do you? She was sitting there quiet. I guess she was still shook up. And, you know, I could understand that. But at the time, my anger got the best of me. I know it wasn't her fault. It could have been anybody passing through, just stumble across a, a dumb cop making a dumb move, trying to set up some dummies. It could have been anybody, right? I told her I was sorry, and I told her don't ever come in that area again, period. I walked up to the bus station and gave her the little money that I had on me and told her, it don't matter where you go, just just go far. Just go far, take your kid and go. By now I was feeling sad and I really wanted to give her a hug, man. And me, I ain't had one in so long. And I could tell she was longing for one herself. I had to figure out my next move. Technically, my cover wasn't blown, but I'm pretty sure they don't want to talk to me anymore and I never get the chance to say anything to them after this. But so while I'm talking, really my mission is done, right? I guess I can just hit up my guy and get, uh, you know, get a ticket up out of here. <laughs> But I got a feeling that it's gonna be a little more complicated than that, right? Nothing ever easy, especially not in this line of work. I 
I guess the big dogs caught one of the whole AK deal and now the op was shut down. The new plan was to bust them with the possession of the guns. The city couldn't take any more unsolved murders and even all the overtime wasn't enough to keep the cops happy. Now the plan was to, you know, have murders done but they would be able to get solved because of the AKs. But still, at this point, the city had so much chaos coming from the townspeople about the murders that they was just too scared of what the repercussions would be of more dead people. Especially with the summertime coming up. Some of y'all might not know, but in the summertime, it just don't get hot because of the sun. It get hot because of all the gunfire that goes on. Why would he not tell me this before now? I felt like my guy was running the game on me. You know, something wasn't right, man. They always reach out to me. You know, why change up now? How do you come across information like this and you don't hit me up and let me know? But before I could really question him, he threw a big bonus my way just to keep me listening. Because I threatened to hang up and get on the first thing smoking back to my city. He asked me to find out where they took the guns and get police in there to make arrests. See, but to this day, no one in Double M has ever been to jail. They were ready to die or kill first. I hated him for pulling this last minute stuff on me. But I gave in. I told him I would find the guns. And after that, I'm on my way back, point blank, pit. I knew a few spots where the gang hung out. One of them had to have something or someone I could talk to. And I probably have to beat whatever words I got up out of them to hear anything. But first I had to go lay down for a while. I was tired, man. The adrenaline rush of a shootout. It don't hit you at the time, but afterwards, you don't want to do nothing but sit it down for a minute. I needed some sleep. And even though it's hard for me to sleep usually, I'm scared of my own mind and the dreams that live in it. But I had to lay down and give me some sleep. Every dream I have is like a bad movie. The type you watch at home on a Thursday night with your lady. The type you don't even pay attention to until you get about an hour in. And you only pay attention then because your lady keep asking you what's going on. The type of movie you watch already knowing who's the bad guy and his motivations are selfish and stupid. But then you're tricked by a meaningless and unearned twist that my grandma could have seen coming. The worst of the worst part is having to sit there through the whole thing. Most of the time already knowing it's a dream and trying to wake myself up. I can feel myself tossing and turning in the bed while I dream. Tonight's movie featured a fool who fell in love with his job. Put the happiness of his bosses before his own self. And you know how it go. Eventually, he lost his wife and his baby girl in the process to a younger and funner man. Needless to say, the fool was me. This dream was better than the last one, the one where I was in hell. At least it was better than that, huh? At the end, the twist was <laughs> that it wasn't a dream. That I was a fool for real. 
And most likely I lost my wife and baby girl for real. And I'm sure some young and fun bull had already come in and brought new life to my wife. Probably the cable guy come, you know, come by to fix the Wi-Fi that my wife purposely messed up. She wasn't the most internetically inclined, so she probably just unhooked the cord and blamed it on the baby. You know, I almost wanted to cry at the thought of it. But your emotions are skewed in dreams. The monsters I'm sent to catch are smarter than the common person thinks. Just because someone is evil doesn't mean that they aren't educated. They only spend their time being schooled by the streets and the morals of the others. I understand them though. But I don't understand why they do what they do. You know, it seems stupid to me. But I'm sure they feel the same way about me. And if only they knew what I left behind to chase them. A wife, a loving wife, a baby, a, a beautiful baby. I left them behind. But they bring their families along for the ride. You know, it's dangerous, man. Way more dangerous. But at least they get to see true love. Somebody right there, you know, right by their side during their time of need. I'm jealous of that. Is true love sticking by a husband that you know is a murderer and thief? Or is true love sticking beside a husband that hunts murderers and thieves? The first wife, at least she along for the ride. The ups, the down, you know, there's no secrets. She know who her husband is. She know what he goes through. She know what he does. But the second wife sits at home and shops and goes to the gym in way too tight tights and <laughs> enjoys her misery. She probably wouldn't even recognize me if she seen me at work, seen me in the street. I'm selfish. Even as selfless as I am at work, on a job like this, I'm still selfish as a one-year-old. And I put my own will way over what's best for my family. Death is coming. Death is coming. It's coming. I think I can feel it. Death is coming. These words rang in my mind like a demonic ringtone. My hands were shaking so bad I could barely load the bullets into my magazines. I wish the magazines that I often held were the kinds you read on the beach and not the kinds you shove into the bottom of a cold piece of steel. Waiting for somebody to pull her trigger and warm her up. A vacation, man. A beach. Sand. Bikinis. Fun. <sighs> It just seems so distant. Almost like it don't even exist. I guess I am on vacation. <laughs> A vacation away from everything I love. Just, who am I kidding, man? This is what I love. <laughs> wow. I never realized that. This is what I love. Well, you know what? I realized it, but I guess I never said it out loud. This is what I love. And that's why I'm here. The dark chant in my head started to quiet down some. And I got my nerve back. Just enough to get up and head to the first spot where the guns might be. When I got there, all the guys stood around looking nervous. I'm sure I rattled these dogs' cages after I killed their leaders in that gun deal. You know, gangs, they seem strong until you kill their leader. 
you know, the members are so young and immature that often they don't understand the idea of a pecking order. So soon as the one in power is gone, greed and power run rampant through the ranks, making everybody quick to forget the chaotic order of their dead leader. In the movies, you see a guy sneak into a place and choke out the guards one by one. You know, and then carry on his mission. But the truth is, that's fake, phony, baloney. Made for the movies, made for TV, made for video games, whatever. In real life, unless you got the time to tie and gag those guys, or got enough tranquilizer for all of them, <laughs> you gotta kill them. So I'm gonna wait till it's dark. Cause I don't wanna have to kill all these guys. You know, I got a lot of blood on my hands. If I can, you know, stop from getting a little bit more, I look at that as a small little personal victory. You know, maybe that'd give me enough time to get in there and, and get what I need. You know, I just wait till it get dark and maybe a few of them will leave. And I just take a quick look around and find them guns. They won't be easy to miss. The sun made its way behind the building. It slow danced through the sky, countdown to my dumb plan. I took a few empty water bottles with me, along with some duct tape. It didn't make a perfect silencer, but it was better than nothing. I made my way through a hole I cut in the gate and snuck in, every step careful as a house cat. The gang was pretty easy to sneak by. They were all drinking and smoking and listening to trap music so the 808s gave me enough cover that they couldn't hear me if I dropped a box of glasses I saw some crates under a tarp I wasn't sure you know if they were the ones I was looking for but I had to get closer and check to make sure if I sent the police on a dummy mission they would take the guns into a hole so deep only God himself could find it. And my mission would be an even worse failure than I already feel like. I got close and moved the tarp enough to peek inside. It wasn't what I was looking for. It looked similar, you know, to the crates that I gave them, but it wasn't them. I put the tarp back and made my way back out of here. Now on the way out, I heard some guys talking about a party they were having on the top floor. Didn't really sound right, though. You know, it sounded like cold words for something. Something, something dark and sinister. You know, maybe I was being prejudiced, but they did call themselves Murder Mob. And wore the name like a badge of honor. I followed the two guys close, but not too close. And I stopped when we got to the stairs. I clicked the safety off my gun and took a few deep breaths. It was moves like these. Unplanned moves that my instinct made for me. That always got me into trouble. I really thought it would be best if I stayed the course and made my way out of here. But that's the very problem right there. Staying the course for me. You know, I'm constantly swerving off of it. Seeing what enchanting dangers is down the road less traveled. I held my gun close and made my way up the stairs. I started to hear laughter. And screams to go along with it. There was a group of young ladies who looked like they were done partying, but the boys were just getting started. Now, I truly hoped that they would let them go, but I already knew that wasn't going to happen. 
At least not without a little lead persuasion. Now I wasn't leaving without these girls. Those guns became a distant second objective on my quest for justified evils. From my hiding spot, I watched the girls try to uncomfortably sit comfortable in the lion's den. You know, it's really kind of stupid on my part because I don't know these women. I don't know their stories, but you know, I do know the type though. You know, every week they probably get into it with some guys trying to be cool and biting off more than they can chew. But be that as it may, it doesn't get these beasts to go ahead and to torment them tonight. Maybe some other girl some other night, but not these girls on this night. You know, I'm thinking I might have to shoot my way out of here. There ain't no way they're going to let me walk up out of here, especially with tonight's entertainment. The gun was hard to hold from the sweat in my palms. I'm surprised the handle hadn't rusted. I reached into the deepest, stupidest part of myself and made a move towards the party. I knocked the biggest guy down with the butt of the gun and grabbed another guy at gunpoint. I don't want much of y'all. I just want to get out of here with these girls. And I promise I won't kill all y'all. They looked at me like I meant business. I said, don't go for them straps now. Matter of fact, throw them all in that bag over there and slide it over here to me. I guess when you take on 10 times more guys than you, with five times bigger guns than you, those guys know you either A, ain't got nothing to lose, B, too stupid to realize what you got to lose, C, an outright idiot with a death wish, or D, <laughs> all of the above. And which one would you bubble in in my scenario? The girl stood there looking dazed and confused. I'm sure they never in a million years expected somebody to save them from murder mob. These domestic type disputes can always be tricky though, man. I started looking at the girls and I saw a little look in their faces that didn't sit right with me. Then one of the girls spoke up and said, well, what about the money? Hmm. The guys were treating the girls rough, but they were getting paid for it. it. Don't make it right, but in their minds, it made it fair. I wondered what the girls truly wanted. Did they want to get away, or did they want to get paid? They can't have both. I motioned for them to come, but they kept standing there, still looking lost. I said, so what's wrong with y'all? You gonna put up with this for money? How much? A few hundred dollars worth of your dignity? You don't know these guys, and you think they gonna stop it smacking you around a little bit? These guys will kill you for fun, especially if you don't get them everything they want and more. One of the girls spoke up, saying she needed the money, saying they all needed the money. The other girls looked at the floor in agreement. I wanted to smack them myself, man. Not for the, you know, the same reason as Double M, but to try to smack some sense into him. <laughs> Probably be an even further waste of my time. Listen here, girls. I'm going to leave. So one more time, are you coming or not? The leader of the girl spoke up again. We need our money first. Make them pay us, then we can go. 
Girl, is you crazy? Man, I ain't got no time to be trying to get money out these boys. We need to get up out of here. Then one of the guys spoke up. <laughs> Look, man, you trying to be Captain Saver thought, and these girls don't care so. They just want their money. And they want to have a good time, man. So I'm going to be nice. And I'm only going to bust your head halfway open for interrupting our party. Just then, I knew I would be dodging bullets like raindrops. Before they could get to their guns, I had already dropped four of them and put one in the big guy and knocked down early. The one who I held at gunpoint turned and charged me, knocking me to the ground. I wasn't mad at him, though, because I was able to use him as a shield from the other guys. They started shooting at us, and he started freaking out, telling them to stop firing. I kicked them off and fired back and headed to the exit. I slammed the door and put a pipe I saw laying around through the handle to bar it. I had four floors of stairs to make it down, and I don't think I ever touched more than a quarter of them. The guys on the lowest level didn't hear the shots, so I had the chance to still get out of there before they made it downstairs and filled them in on what happened. Everybody was good and drunk now, and it seemed half of them was gone. So it was pretty easy for me to make my way out the same way I came in. I could hear the music cut off and a bunch of screaming once I got a few yards away from the place. I had really messed up these guys night. Shoot, I messed up their whole day. I know they'd be on the prowl all night long looking for me. I hope that someone heard the gunshots. Logic told me that someone, somewhere, had to hear machine gun fire. Logic never made no sense in the streets, though. I don't know what to do at this point. I still had my mission, but now they're going to put the word out about me. It's true what they say. Only fools rush in. Everywhere I went, I heard whispers about what happened. Nobody had the real story, though, but they had a story nonetheless. I don't think I killed any of those guys, you know, at least I hope not. I got enough bodies on me as it is, man. I had to find the other spot. I had to figure out, you know, where these guns were. And this is crazy, man. Why would I agree to something like this? I'm out here trying to save these women and my own life. You know, this is... And my own wife is probably, you know, at home just hating my guts right now. And I'm out here putting my life on the line for some women that won't even leave when some guys is smacking them around. Beating on them. What's wrong with me, man? Why can't I just stay focused and finish the dang mission? You know, I guess the mission is so flawed that subconsciously I can't make up my own mind and follow it straight. I guess my mind is telling me it's no way you sitting here following this stupid plan, doing this stuff that you know ain't right in the first place. Why am I such a bleeding heart? Somewhere someone is going through some heart-wrenching junk right now. And I can't be there to stop it. And that drives me crazy. It's billions of people on this earth. Does it really make a difference if I save one or two of them? I see the news and they talk about how many people have been murdered. Cities with millions of people in them have less than a thousand murders in them every year. But the news warns us, you know, that it's not even safe to look out your window. A city with three million people in it had 490 murders last year. 
That's point zero one six three percent of the people. <laughs> Not even half of one percent. Not even a a, a a quarter of one percent of the people. Point zero one six three. To put it in perspective, imagine your brother or sister hit the lottery and brought home three million and gave you four hundred and ninety dollars. Would you be happy with that amount? Or would you say, that ain't nothing? I can't believe you only gave me $490. We all know how you would feel. We all know. You wouldn't even be happy if they gave you $49,000 out of three million. So what's this all really about? Does the press and the people really care about 490 people? Or do they all just want something to talk about and someone to be scared of? I believe each one of those souls means something and they deserve justice. But then they all have backstories, reasons, you know. And does that really matter? You know, it shouldn't, but it does. Context, context, context. I wish I could just do my job like all the other cops, but maybe that's the problem. <laughs> maybe I'm the only one doing my job. 